skin, Big Vanish. Hello, Perfect Beauties. My name is Daisy, and I am so nervous right now because I am going to be jumping right in and doing a super heart-to-heart -heart vulnerable video that I've wanted to do for so long. There's no excuse but the fact that I have this fear that I am so blunt and I am so honest and I'm so real, which a subset of people love me for that, but I also feel like there will be a subset of people who will hate me for that and because now I run, you know, a seven figure plus business and I have a lot of people whose livelihoods depend on Banish <laughs> that um, I don't want to say anything that will offend people and I know things will offend people and it's okay to offend people because you're never going to make anyone happy but I don't think I'm even confident enough to own my own thoughts and my own feelings and the, my, the way I see the world to be able to say something that is so vulnerable and real again you know like i'm not confident about that i think a long time ago when you know when i had nothing to lose it was okay because it's like if they don't like me they don't like me like they don't need to watch this video but now it's kind of like if they don't like me then how's this going to affect the perception of the business and all that so i am going to do a very vulnerable video i don't know i hope you forgive the thought quality on this because I haven't really rehearsed it. But it's something I wanted to talk about because I think it's important and I want my viewers to know. And I, I did this video about four years ago. It was called The Truth of Being Beautiful. And it was talking about how being this attractive girl, like how society perceives you and treats you. And now I want to go on the flip side because when I did that video before, Banish hadn't started. Um, Banish was not born yet, and Banish is now a company that, um, you know, is a pretty big growing business right now. It's no longer me, you know, in my room, kind of just making YouTube videos. It's, we have a production and a team and people all over the world, and so there has been a lot of, like, business stuff that I've had to deal with, and I am the owner and CEO of Banish, so I don't have a business partner. I'm not just the face of the company, I actually run the day-to-day -day operations and I actually am the CEO. I've learned so much and I feel like there's this notion of what a girl boss is and this um, publicized image of this glamorous lifestyle girl bosses lead. And I just want to say that that's only the stuff you see on social media and there's so much shit that goes on behind the scenes that uh, you don't see and I feel like I don't know if I would recommend people or like encourage almost women to become girl bosses because I feel like most of them can't go through with it. So when I started my business when I was 22, 23, this was kind of before I started Banish and before it kind of took off, I went out a lot. I would go out to clubs a lot and I was just out <laughs> a lot and I would present myself in this way of being a very hot girl. Like I would, you know, get all my makeup done up, I would do my hair, I would wear really cute, sexy clothes and really high heels and get my nails done and just do all of that. It was interesting because of course, guys pay a lot of attention to you. I remember like going places and with some of my girlfriends and people just want to take pictures with you. Like they don't know who you are, but they just want to take pictures with you. I remember a lot of guys would just come and take pictures with us, even though we had no idea who they were because they wanted to be seen with people like us because we presented a certain kind of value. I like that. I enjoyed that time in my life. Um, you know, we were able to go to a lot of parties and go out, go drinking, get free drinks, you know, get free dinners, like get things purchased for us, even though it wasn't something we were seeking. Like when I say we, I mean me and my girlfriends, it just kind of happened, right? And this was at a time and point in my life where I didn't really have much to lose. I didn't have much to offer, but it was just fun. I had fun. I had fun during that time. And when you present yourself as that kind of girl, as a girl who is attractive, and who laughs at someone's jokes, listens to someone when they talk, and wears, you know, four inch platforms and things like that, people will treat you to nice things. Not treat you to nice things in terms of 
paying for your things, but you know, they will buy you a drink or they will take you out to dinner and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? They want to do that to you, not because they actually want to be in a relationship with you or because they want to get to know you better as a person. That's never the case, right? The guys doing that are buying you a drink because you know, they're hoping that they can get something out of it at the end of the night, if you know what I mean. And that was something I always knew, but it's weird because now that I am in a completely different state of my business, where I am interacting with a lot of guys, and I am in very male-dominated environments, and being a business owner, I'm part of so many different masterminds, where I am like maybe one or two of the only women in the areas I, I can see there's like this different shift. Sometimes when guys don't know who you are um, and they see you as this, you know, pretty girl, this young pretty girl, they want to get to know you because they want to get something from you, right? But when I present myself in a way that completely eliminates that possibility and I want to actually establish a professional working relationship with them, I have felt that there is this kind of door that closes because I am not someone that they want almost as an equal footing. <laughs> yes, they want to take me out to dinner. Yes, they want to buy drinks for me. You know, yes, they want me in their phone contacts, but they don't want to give me access to information or to money or to other things out there. It's a very it's a very different game. So if I present myself in a way that is this flirty, hot, young Asian girl, they of course want to get to know me better and want to pursue something, right, in that field. But if I present myself as a savvy, intelligent businesswoman, the door automatically shuts. Even though they have other guy friends who they do talk business with, they just don't feel comfortable, maybe. Right, with someone like me, they, they, they might feel intimidated, they might feel like, oh no, this is a man's world and a man's club, and I'm gonna share my contacts with other guys who are like me, but I'm not gonna share them with you, blah, 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 kind of thing. Um, and I felt that, um, I felt very, very, how do I say, like more, like, like very awkward in those um, situations, but I don't let it get into my way of getting what I want because I wanna be in the environment with the men because the men have the power and the resources and the access to these things that will make the business grow and I need to be in there. And I can't, I can't shy away from it just because I'm a woman, right? And even if they see me differently and even if they at first don't want to talk to me because they want to see me as more of a toy than as an equal partner with equal contributions and footings, then that's okay because I'm still going to fight for me to belong into that group and that organization or whatever that is. I think being a successful female entrepreneur is so much more difficult than it is to be a male entrepreneur. I think a huge part is I'm 29 years old now and there's a lot of pressure to get married and have kids, blah, 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 all that. Whereas the company right now is like really taking off and just growing so fast. And I feel like I'm definitely pulled by society and definitely pulled by pressure to have to choose one or the other. And I've seen it with a lot of women business owners. A lot of them are single. A lot of them don't have kids. And, you know, that's kind of like what they've had to sacrifice in order to reach a level of success. Whereas the men I know who are in equal footings in terms of like business revenue, whatever, they have kids, they have a family, they have it all. And I feel like when a guy has kids, it 
makes him seem as more of like a better businessman. It makes him seem like a family guy when he has a wife and kids. It makes him seem more stable. It makes him seem more honest. It makes him seem more honorable. And you want to do business with that guy who has a wife who's beautiful and um, these kids who are beautiful and intelligent. Um, and then the guy goes and travels and does whatever he does and then does business, whatever. But if the, if the reverse happened, right? The woman is usually the one who's single with no kids. And if a single woman who is an entrepreneur does have children, you know, people are probably always thinking, she's not gonna be a good businesswoman because she's gonna put her kids first, or you know, her kids are always gonna get in the way of blah, 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 all this kind of stuff. Or maybe she's really bitchy and hard to deal with because why is she single, blah, 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 right? There are very few cases where the man is kind of the stay-at-home dad plays that role but statistically it has been proven and shown that women who out earn their partners have I don't know what time more likely chance of divorce but a chance of being separated and divorced is much higher for women who are the breadwinners of their families now I don't know why that is um, per se I have a few reasons but I am not married nor do I have kids so um, I guess time will tell for that it's hard because there's so few women at the top. It's hard because as an Asian female that was born and raised in a culture of pleasing other people and proving to other people and making them happy uh, to kind of stand out for myself and kind of trailblaze and speak out and fight for what it is that I want. But I'm so glad and I'm very, very grateful. I feel like I have attributed a lot of my success because Spanish is direct to consumer. And so we control point A to point B to point C, like every part of the process. So it doesn't matter what people think of me. It doesn't matter their perception of me. It just matters that the customers want the products and they'll buy it and that's gonna sustain the business, right? Business at the end of the day is a whole balance sheet of profit and loss statements and you need to, you need to be able to make a profit at the end of you know every cycle. And if you can still keep a profit at the end of every cycle, then your business is gonna run. But if I were to do business in a way where I would need investors or if I, if I would need to fundraise and fuse capital into my business, I feel like it would be so much harder for me because I am a young Asian female and I'm not in that network where I feel like these men are not willing to share their networks as much as maybe women are or maybe women we just don't have access to these. I feel like there's a, there's a few reasons why women don't make it to the higher echelons of success. And this isn't to say that women need to be more successful, I don't think so, but you know, I've always wondered why. I'm, I'm always the only female in the room. And that's not a coincidence. There needs to be a reason why that is. And I feel like there's a few reasons. First, I think women overanalyze everything. I think we think too much. I think we're not decisive. I think we try to be so perfect all the time when we should just go out and actually do it. Right, so I think when we kind of go back and forth, we kind of think too much, blah, blah, blah. And I have that issue too. I'm trying to do less of that, but I do think a lot and I think I overanalyze things and I think I don't pull the trigger when I need to as fast as I should. The second thing is I think men, when they state things, men state things and men in business and in politics and stuff, they just state things as fact. Even if they're not right, they just say things like they know what they're talking about. And women, we always start our topics and our conversation with, I don't know if this is right, but, or, you know, this might be off topic, but blah, blah, blah. We always like preface it with something that uh, will have a cushion in case it's like not right. But I feel like men, they just state things and no matter if it's right or wrong, they just state it as fact. I mean, look at our current president, right? So I feel like that's also something guys do is they're very demanding and commandeering and all that. I also feel like women, we, we don't prioritize the right things. We don't work on big issues. We work on little little itty bitty issues. I have an executive coach and she kind of yelled at me the other day because she's like, Daisy, you're always bringing up these little problems here and there, but you're not thinking bigger. You're not strategizing. You're not thinking of how to invest in this business that will make it grow. And I think it was like a slap in the face at first because I was really like, how are you to tell me like what I'm thinking is right or wrong? But now I'm taking a step back. I understand that she's really challenging me because I'm the only girl in this group and I'm the only girl she coaches. 
um, she's challenging me to think bigger and to work on bigger issues instead of always thinking about the little itty bitty details of every fucking thing that I have to worry about, right? So I need to challenge myself to think bigger and to think more strategically instead of all these fucking little things that kind of run me down to the ground sometimes. So I feel like overall, I feel like those are my, might be the top few issues of why we don't see a lot of women succeeding in business, going from the seven figure business to the eight to the nine to the 10 figure businesses. And I also think it has to do with timing too. I think women, right, when you're 29 years old like me, you're thinking about your future. So most women's priority when they're 29 is to get married, um, is to get married and have a family and have kids. Well, when, you're, when you have kids and you haven't started your career yet, I mean, you can't really like start your career anymore. You can't really start a business. It's so much harder to do that if you are, you know, married with kids. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's so much harder to do that. And it's, I think, especially hard to do that if your husband is the provider in the family, because then you're going to be expected to take care of the the home and the domestic sphere while the guy is out making money. And so you don't really have an opportunity to run your business on your own terms. So I think if women want to start businesses, I would suggest women to start them as early as possible. So that way you have more time and freedom to be able to really like crank it out in the beginning. And then I remember Anne Marie Slaughter, the, was she a Princeton professor or someone? She just said, you know, she had another school of thought, which was for women to have kids early, like really early. So that way, um, once the kids are in college and stuff, then women will have an opportunity to like, you know, go after their careers and kind of do what it is that they really wanted to do with their lives. But honestly, it's not fair. It's not fair that if a man is, is you know, successful or has a demanding career, that he has a wife and kids that will take care of things for him, you know, while he goes out and travels and does things. And I'm not saying it's easy for men, but I'm saying it's a lot easier than the other way around, which I don't think society brings enough attention on the real struggle of being a female entrepreneur, a female who is kind of breaking barriers and fighting <laughs> for things out there. I just want to say that it's it's not easy. The journey is not easy. It's hard. It's really hard. You might see, you know, these people, these Ty Lopez's or these, you know, entrepreneurial people, you know, flying in private jets, having designer handbags, going on vacation to Aruba or Tahiti or whatever, but that's the image they try to sell you to sell their courses, right? That's the image they're selling you. That's not everything that goes on behind the scenes. And I feel like people see so much of what is out there in the media, but they don't actually understand the struggles that people have to go through day to day to day behind the back end. And of course, for me, I'm not gonna share my struggles on the internet, right? As a business owner, I'm not going to tell you if I had a bad day. I'm not gonna tell you the tough decisions I make. That is something that is strictly personal and internal, but it's not all like rosy and glamorous and fun all the time, which is what I really wanna share with you guys. And especially being a woman at 29 years old, it is, I have to make a lot of difficult choices and I have to be in a society, in a world where when people see me, the first thing they see me as is more of an object of a pretty girl to take pictures with. They're not gonna see me as a partner or someone they want to do business with or someone they want me in their group think, who thinks that I would be able to contribute a lot of value in their group, right? I think it's interesting how a lot of men they want to help their daughters succeed. They want to help their daughters um, be successful, but they don't want to help their wives. I've noticed that it's all about like making sure their daughter becomes like Ivanka Trump, but they don't want, you know, they don't want their wife to be like Ivanka almost. And there's this whole theory about Ivanka and Melania, which is probably not a fit for this video right now, but you know, I feel like for women, there's two women to be, right? There's there's a woman, the object, the beautiful lady, the one that looks great on your arm, the trophy, the one that says yes and smiles to you and agrees with you in everything you're saying. And then there's a the woman, the power woman, the Hillary Clinton, the Oprah Winfrey's of the world, right? The women that men are scared of, right? So there's these two women and you have to choose which, which category you wanna to belong to. You can't be both. Right, you, you're, you're put in a category immediately. And guys like to be with this category women. 
guys like to be with the category of beautiful women who shut up and are an object on their arms and are not treated as people with with a lot of potential not all some guys want to be with the side but a lot of guys want to be with the side and a lot of guys still view women to this day on this side which is why we don't have women in positions of power that's not a coincidence that's just the way it is right and if there's so few women at the top and if guys aren't opening their doors and giving women access to these things then how how are women supposed to keep moving up in society like how are we supposed to become president how are we supposed to become ceos of huge companies how are we supposed to grow our businesses out of you know the you know the five six figure range right i mean i was thinking the other day like what if what if the president of the United States right now is an Asian female? And what if the CEOs of the Fortune 500 companies were Asian female? And what if the owners of the most successful small businesses in the United States were Asian female? Like, how would I feel? Like, how would I do things differently? How would the world treat me differently? And I feel like if that were the case, I would think the world would be at my fingertips. I would think bigger. I would think I could do whatever I wanted to do. I wouldn't be so self-conscious of the way people viewed me and I wouldn't overthink how, you know, how to be, what kind of personality to have, you know, how I should introduce myself to somebody, all that kind of stuff. I feel like right now I have to overthink and think of all these things because when people think of me, they're not going to think of me as successful in the beginning, right? I have to constantly have to prove to them that I'm not the type of cover that they think I am. And I just think I would be so much more confident. Um, and I don't think people understand that when you're fighting against something, when you're not the um, prototype or the, you're not the, the general look of what it means to be in a certain group, it is so much harder to be successful. Not impossible, but just so much harder. And so that's just kind of something I wanted to share. As women, we're always gonna be viewed first by the way we look. How hot is she? Can I bang her? That kind of thing, right? People are gonna judge us instantly on that. <laughs> and then it's gonna be this, oh, is she successful? Is she legit? Does she have things to contribute? Oh no, like that shit is scary, right? Kind of thing. But you can't really be both. Like in this world, you can't really be both. You have to be one or the other. And before I started my business, I was the girl here. I was the cute girl who laughed at your jokes, who you bought dinner for, who made you feel appreciated, who, you know, smiled when you talked, who you wanted to take pictures of. And now I'm over here and I'm that girl that I feel like the guys don't want to include me in anymore because I maybe threaten them. Maybe their wives don't like it when I'm there. I don't know. But that's the reality of the world that I have to live and play in. And I just wish I knew this <laughs> going into this. I don't think anyone told me this. I didn't have anyone like holding my hand. It was just something I had to figure out. And I really want to share with you guys the realities of what's out there. And that it's not all fun and games and it's not pretty and it's not amazing. And I do have to make choices in my life right now. And I will have to struggle and that's something I've already accepted. But it's something I wanted to be, you know, real and vulnerable with you guys about. So, now that I got that off my chest, I feel like the video is not very eloquent and articulate because I just have so many, like, thoughts jumbled in my head. But, thank you all so much for watching and I hope I will be able to open up to you guys more and, like, talk more about kind of the issues that I have been facing and just like what's in my head and like just be more vulnerable and real with you guys because I don't need to share with you like how great and amazing my life is, <laughs> you know? Like I, I, I kind of went through this like conflict, like should I vlog like all my travels and like all my life and blah, blah, blah and like share with you guys all the cute clothes I bought and all that stuff but I feel like that's stuff that other people can do way better than I can. What I can really contribute is this life of me being this female entrepreneur growing this business from seven now to eight figures and um, taking you along the journey with me and once we become a household name and a household brand like like you know sharing that experience with you guys and hopefully inspiring more women to recognize what it's like and for them to be conscious about and cognizant so that way they can make a good decision 
they can have the information to make the decision whether this is the life they want or they don't want. You know, it's not for everybody. I don't think entrepreneurship is for everybody. I wouldn't recommend it to a lot of people. But if it is what you want, then I want to help you, right? Get there. So thank you all so much for watching, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.